What's up, everybody? Two really good fights are happening on the regional MMA scene that goes down this week, March 31st and April 1st. One of them's happening on CFFC 117, and then the other one's happening the very next night, CFFC 118. These are two bouts that you aren't going to want to miss because I promise like these two fights, I am 99.9% .9 sure they're going to live up to the billing. And I'm going to talk about them with you guys right now. But before I do, if you like this video, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. It would really help grow my algorithm and help spread the word about some of these cool, amazing fighters that I have on my show all the time. With that being said, CFFC 117, there is there are several bouts on here that are really good. There are two title fights, an interesting undercard, but there's one bout on here that I really circled uh, right away as soon as it was announced. It happens in the light heavyweight division. It's a contest between Luke Fernandez and Derek Overstreet. I know both of these guys fairly well, and I can tell you that um, from a personal level and my interactions with both Luke Fernandez, Derek Overstreet, you're talking about two amazing, uh, incredible human beings outside of the cage. Inside the cage, they're absolute phenoms. Um, this is about, like, if you looked at it, and this is your very first time watching the CFFC, you may not really understand what a high-level caliber fight it is that you are about to witness. Um, Luke Fernandez is making his pro debut Derek Overstreet's a two-in-one guy. So on paper, you're not talking about a lot of professional bouts, but I'm telling you, like, these guys are going to bring the action to very, very high-level guys. I'm going to start with Luke Fernandez. For people who aren't aware, he is, the un he is an undefeated amateur champion. He was a CFFC light heavyweight champion as well. He is Tapology's number one ranked fighter in the northeast on the amateur scene of course that's going to change now that we're up in the pro ranks now but you're talking about a guy that never lost a fight i like everything that i see from fernandez in fact i think he's so good earlier in the year somebody asked me tyler who's on your short list for prospect of the year and i told everybody i was like luke fernandez is on that list that's how good that guy is he can do everything really well he um he can strike he can wrestle he can grapple. Um, I, I I like everything that I see from Luke Fernandez. Um, he comes from a great gym. Uh, I think Dante Rivera is one of the best coaches in the country. But Luke Fernandez, you know, regardless of what happens in this fight, he is a name that everyone should know at, in the light heavyweight division. I don't care if you're in California, Alaska, whatever. Like, you should know this guy's name. He's very, very good. A very high-level fighter. Very well-rounded, as I said before. So it'll be interesting to see kind of like what his strategy is, what he is going to do, um, what his game plan is against a guy like Derek Overstreet. Derek is a, a, a friend of mine. Um, I, 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 I've known Derek for a couple of years. Um, an amazing guy. I love having conversations with him that really have nothing to do with fighting. But, you know, we're going to put a hard stop in there. I'm not going to tell you guys what it is that uh, I chat with him about, but I will tell you. When I think of Derek Overstreet, I think of brute force violence right away in the cage. Um, he has a Muay Thai discipline. You can expect elbows. You can expect knees. You can expect pressure. You can expect a lot of aggression from this guy. Um, a Derek Overstreet fight consists of elbows to the face, Muay Thai clinching, uh, brute force striking. He's going for um, a knockout every single time this guy fights, like he is not going to back down from anybody. Um, I love watching Derek fight for those reasons. Highly, highly entertaining. Um, he was a former NCAA uh, college football player. Um, so he does have a world-class athletic pedigree. We're talking about a guy that if you're making your pro debut against anybody and you fight at 205 pounds, Derek Overstreet is among the toughest matchups that you could get in that weight class that's how good he is uh, props to Luke Fernandez and props to Derek Overstreet for taking this fight when you look at it um, I'm reasonably sure Luke definitely could have gotten uh, an easier matchup but he's choosing to fight Derek Overstreet um, I know Derek pretty well as I've said before um, 
Derek will find anybody. I, I already know that. And But I also know that behind the scenes, it's hard for him to get fights. Um, a lot of people don't want to fight uh, Derek Overstreet because they understand how dangerous he is. Um, in any event, I applaud CFFC for making this fight happen. Make sure you guys check this one out. The only thing that's going to surprise me in this bout is if it goes the full 15 minutes. That is the only thing that would surprise me. I don't expect that. I do not expect this bout to go all 15 minutes. Let's see what happens. Moving on up, CFFC 118. That's going to take place on Saturday, April 1st. As is the case with CFFC 117, there's some really good fights for CFFC 118 as well. Um, Charlie Alexander versus Dylan Mantello. That's definitely going to be one of them. Uh, Ryan Burgos from Tiger Shulman's. He's going to be fighting. He is a, a, an absolute savage. Make sure you watch him fight too. This is a contest that I have circled though that I really have no idea what's going to happen. First, let's start with Daquan Buckley. Like when I look at this guy, he has a three and one record. He trains out of Killcliffe FC. Um, strong, powerful. His only loss is against Jordan Heiderman. That um, and who you might recall that name that might that name might be familiar because Jordan was on uh, season thirty of the Ultimate Fighter. No shame in losing to somebody like that. Um, I expect Daquan Buckley to kind of try to come out. I'm expecting him to be aggressive. I'm expecting him to go for an early uh, finish. Um, what's kind of misleading about Daquan Buckley is he only has one knockout on his record. Um, but don't think, you know, let's not get it twisted. That guy has like one stop finishing power every single time he goes out. Um, and, and I expect that to kind of be his game plan. I'm expecting him to go out, really try to push the envelope, really try to make uh, Ian uncomfortable. I think it's so where Alston's kind of on his back foot and having to try to use his footwork. Uh, and I expect him to really try to hunt for that finish. So um, w we shall see what happens on that one. But uh, Daquan Buckley is a very talented, high-level guy. I like watching him fight. Uh, and it's an intriguing matchup. Uh, he'll be going up against Ian Alston, whom I interviewed not that long ago. If you guys didn't check that one out, I'm going to go ahead. I'll put a link in the description for this video. So check out my uh, interview with Ian. You'll get his thoughts uh, about, about the matchup and what he thinks. Um, I did not ask Ian about his game plan against Daquan Buckley. I never asked that question. Um, so this is just pure conjecture from my end of things. But first, let's kind of break down a few things about what makes Ian a unique guy. Um, Ian is quick. He's agile. And I don't think it's far-fetched that one day we might see him compete in the light heavyweight division. Um, he constantly comes in 20-plus um, pounds underweight. Um, so that is kind of something to think about. Like one day, is it a possibility that he could make 205 pounds um, I'm not sure, but you know, it, it, it is intriguing. I do kind of wonder that as, as far as the game plan against Daquan Buckley, I am expecting, uh, Ian to use his footwork and his agility, uh, in this, uh, in, in this bout, uh, Ian is very fast for a big guy. He is incredibly fast and he can throw a lot of things that you would not expect if you've never seen him fight before, uh, a very high level striker. He is very technical. Uh, he will throw, he is somebody that can throw a wheel kick. He can do all kinds of things that you wouldn't expect out of a heavyweight. He's a lot faster than you think. And I don't, I think people are surprised at his agility and speed once they are in the cage with him. Ian's coming into this fight off of a loss. Um, he was doing really, uh, he, he was having a great fight against uh, Billy Ray Valdez. Uh, unfortunately for him, uh, he ended up getting caught. Um, so we'll see what happens for this one. Um, it, it is a bout that, once again, the only thing that would surprise me for this one is if it went the full 15-minute distance. If I'm Ian, my game plan is going to be centered upon patience. Uh, I'm going to let uh, Buckley try to walk me down. I'm going to try to do everything I can to drain out his gas tank. If I'm, if I'm Ian Olsen, that's my game plan. The longer this bout goes, the better off it is for me. My, my game plan, if I am Alston, is centered upon patience. And if I can get a submission later on, 
once Buckley is fatigued, I'm going to try to take advantage of that. Ian certainly has some, a submission game up his sleeve, 100%. Um, so, like I said, it's a really interesting fight. I really don't know what's going to happen for this one. Um, heavyweight prospects are hard to find. Uh, I do realize that uh, the heavyweight title is going to be on the line uh, earlier in the week, but nonetheless, uh, you know, heavyweight prospects, what, what, when it, it, it's rare that you see two really high level guys going up against each other, and CFFC is going to give you two really high level. Uh, heavyweight bouts with Velasco uh, against Coleman on CFFC 117. And then you're going to get that again at CFFC 118 between Alston and Buckley. So make sure you guys check that one out. All right, guys, that does it for me. Enjoy the fights.